we hear it all the time that building community is important. But I want to take it just a little bit deeper, that building an engaged community is more important. Because without an engaged community, you don't have supporters who are diehard fans when it comes to your business or your entrepreneurial endeavors. And today, I want to talk to a guest who has been able to build a very engaged community that supports the efforts of which she is passionate about, as well as gives her leads to her business. And I think that during this time of the pandemic and during the many challenges that we have had to endure, it's great to learn from those experts who know how to really engage and build community around their efforts, their passions, and their business. And my guest today, Ms. Danielle McGee, the founder of Black Business Boom, is our second guest, a part of the Black History Month series that we're doing this month during the month of February. I hope that you enjoy this content, and I look forward to hearing from you as we have this conversation around building community to support your business, your movements, and your causes. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Maximize Your Brain with Marquis Brayton. So excited that you are with me again this week as we continue with our Black History Month series. As you know, last week we had a guest who talked about building legacy. And this week we have a guest who's going to be talking about building community and I'm excited to have her on today but before we actually get started I want to thank you for joining me for another live edition those of you who will be listening on the audio on the podcast I thank you for listening as well but you know that we started doing our podcast episodes live at the beginning of the year and it has been fun to engage and to do these live so I want to thank you for joining, commenting, sending emails, and sharing this out with your friends and followers. Also, I want to let you know that this episode is being powered by my brand new freemium, my brand new free gift, the seven stages to shift your brand checklist, seven stages to shift your brand checklist. And these are just simply stages that I went through coming from corporate and coming into full-time entrepreneurship. These are things just to cause you to think about your next steps as you come out of corporate, come out of nonprofit, come out of being an employee and becoming an entrepreneur as a consultant, coach, speaker, trainer. And all you have to do, I'm going to put it on the screen and also speak it as well. All you have to do is to text brand me, all one word, brand me, B R. A-N-D-M-E, all one word to 77222 to grab that free gift. Brand me, all one word to 77222, and you can grab hold of that free gift. Once again, this episode is being powered by my seven stages to shift your brand checklist. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, we're not going to keep you long tonight, but what we want to do is to give a proper introduction to my guest tonight. And my guest is Miss Danielle McGee, and I'm just going to give a brief summary of her bio, but she's going to share a little bit more about herself. But Miss McGee is an award-winning small business advocate and certified digital 
marketer. She is the founder of Black Business Boom, helping small business owners, entrepreneurs to build an engaged community around their business, to help them to have more exposure online. Because we live in a time where we need the opportunity to have exposure and social media, digital marketing, and all of the various technologies give us a level playing field. So there really are no excuses anymore. But Danielle takes it to a whole nother level to help her clients and those of us who are small business owners and entrepreneurs. So let's go ahead and bring our guest to the stage, Miss Danielle McGee. Thank you for joining me today (laughs) for the Maximize Your Brand podcast. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, I gave a brief little bit of your bio, but tell us a little bit more about yourself and how you show up in the world. Absolutely. I'm the founder of Black Business Boom, um, also of Black Owned Nashville, which is a directory for Black owned businesses here in the Nashville area. Um, I'm a digital marketer. I'm an entrepreneur myself. I've been an entrepreneur for about eight years. I also um, I'm from Chicago originally, so I'm a Chicago native now living here in Nashville and teaching at Tennessee State University, where I teach entrepreneurship um, to the next a generation of entrepreneurs. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So you and I met, I think, a couple of years ago, you were participating in the Corner to Corner, I believe, at the time. Mm. And uh, I usually just have an opportunity to speak to each class uh, every year. I actually just got a new email to speak to this semester's class as well. And so let's start there. You know, what prompted you to uh, get into Corner to Corner, which is a nonprofit a business development program here in Nashville. Mm. What prompted you to hop into corner to corner and really start to put some legs to your dream? Well, I'll tell you, I had been an entrepreneur for five years before I even did that. And I came here to Nashville, thought I was going to take a break from being an entrepreneur. And it just is in my soul, apparently. And I attended a Black Entrepreneurship Week event Um, And that event, I learned about Corner to Corner and how amazing it had been to someone who was participating in in that event. So I looked into it and realized that they could give me the foundation that I never got. I thought as a bit as an MBA graduate and, um, you know, having my undergrad degree in marketing and management that. I could certainly open and run a business. I opened my spa in Chicago and I learned really quickly that that wasn't the case. (laughs) And so uh, really backtracking and going to get the foundation I needed from corner to corner is what has kind of catapulted me into success over the last few years. Nice, nice. So talk a little bit about the businesses that you had prior to the uh, current one, you know, being from Chicago and moving to Nashville. Absolutely. I actually, I started out, I opened a spa in 2012. I just got the bright idea. (laughs) I wanted to open a spa and found a location. And and I I had that spa for a little over four years. Um, And I also, at the same time, um, launched a personal chef service. Uh, I had a partner who was a chef and I said, we should start this business. And so we started this romantic uh, personal chef service where we would go into people's homes and we would do these romantic dinners and I would decorate with candles and roses and all that. And he would cook. Um, So running both of those businesses, I realized just how much it is to run in a business. (laughs) Again, I thought, you know, I had gone to school for business for many years that I could run a business, but you know, as you know, when you are the chief everything, you know, it it becomes a whole lot, a whole yeah. lot. I learned that pretty quickly. So now my work is really my goal is to help alleviate some of that stress that others may be experiencing in their business and give them some tips and tricks that they can use to not experience some of the hardship that I did. Right. And I think that's good because basically you you are pulling from your own personal experiences, 
from mm -hmm. previous businesses. And I, and I think sometimes uh, people don't get to hear or see uh, the backstory. Sometimes mm -hmm. they only get to see the success and not <laughs> knowing that there are other things that you may have endured and gone through in order to create today's success. So I, I thought that was uh, great to share that information because I don't know that I knew that you had a couple of businesses prior to this. Yeah, I mean, I've actually had a few others even. I've had some other little tech businesses I worked on and a cocktail mixing business. I, I've had all kind of stuff going on, you know, and I've always had little hustles on the side. I'm just a hustler by nature, I guess. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So today's episode is all about really building community and, mm -hmm. you know, how do we really start to engage and build people, not just around businesses, maybe it's a cause that you're having, maybe it's, mm -hmm. you know, some type of movement that you're creating. And one of the things that I know mm -hmm. in getting to know you and, and learning more about you, um, you've been able to build a very robust, engaged uh, com Facebook group <laughs> community. Um, that yeah. has really been supportive in different causes that you've wanted to do uh, in the city and different mm -hmm. movements and, you know, in support of others who are doing things. And so I wanted to kind of learn a little bit more about, you know, how did all of that come about and what are some tips and things that other small business owners, entrepreneurs can can do to really start building a community around their business. And so let's start about, you know, where did the idea come from to start mm -hmm. that Facebook group? Absolutely. So I moved here to Nashville in 2016 and I'm from Chicago, like I said, and I'm used to living in a city that had a really uh, robust black culture and black communities. And I came to Nashville and was like, okay, um, <laughs> where are the black people? And <laughs> no one could really tell me and so i've always been a very resourceful person so i just started to really google and search on facebook and search on eventbrite and try to find events and you know black focused things going on and as i found them I wanted to share with others, you know, because I would also show up at some of these events and I would find I was the only one there, you know, or there were only a few people. Uh, and so I felt like there was a platform that was needed to really um, bring together the black culture here. I learned that there's lots of black culture in Nashville and I knew it had to be here seeing that there's so many HBCUs. Um, but I've also learned that we're really spread out and, you know, you have some folks in North Nashville, East Nashville, Antioch, Smyrna, as far as Murfreesboro and Clarksville. Um, and so there really wasn't a sense of connectivity in the black community here. So I really started the, the group as a way to just put out the events that were going on, um, in Nashville and it just started it it grew slowly for a while you know but i knew there were a lot of transplants here there was all these all this talk about how many people were not from nashville and i figured there had to be people who were from cities like chicago that also were used to having black experiences right. and so um grew really slowly and so that's one thing that I would tell folks is as you're growing or looking to grow a community, it doesn't happen overnight. And many times people can get discouraged in like trying to grow their group and it's not growing. Um, it's been, you know, it took really three years, four years for us to get to 25,000 mm -hmm. people. So um, it, it, it all of a sudden one day out of the blue, people just start coming in the group and introducing themselves. And from there, it just, we went from 400 people to 1500 in like a month. And then we went from 1500 to 10,000 in like nine months. And it just, it just kept snowballing. And again, it, it, it's just like with any business. I saw an opportunity. I saw a problem that I was having and figured that there were others that were having the same problem. And it really just came from a space of wanting to find people like me and help solve that problem for them. Yeah, I was going to say that's real good because the thing that you did was you, you had a problem yourself, right? And mm -hmm. in order to solve that problem, the thing that you thought of was to create, you know, this group because you knew other mm -hmm. people 
uh, pr- most likely have that same problem because when I tell people I'm a native, they they look at me like, you're really from Nashville? <laughs> like, who's from Nashville? Like, nobody lives here that's from the city. Um, Literally. Yeah, I'm a native. And uh, I was always surprised by people who would, you know, be surprised that I was a native because most people, one, most people don't say that I don't necessarily have the Nashville dialect. But they're just not accustomed to meeting native individuals in the city. And so you solved that problem and you identified or people, other people identified with the same problem. So that's a whole nother step, too. Not only did you have the problem, but now you have people who were self-selecting and self-identifying. Absolutely. It was, again... All of a sudden, folks just started saying, introducing themselves and saying, I'm from Indianapolis and I'm from, you know, Detroit. And people were like, I'm from Detroit, too. And, it, you know, and all of a sudden it just they start adding friends and it right. just it took off because, again, there was just this need not only to know what was going on, but to know somebody. You know, I I moved here and knew zero people. And when I tell people that now, that that was just four years ago when I knew nobody, they can't believe it. Um, But again, there are so many people who have been moved here for a job or because of family, whatever it is, and they know one or two people, if anybody. And so people just, they want to make friends. They right. And it's hard as adults you know, to make friends. So it was also the, the group used to be called Black People Mingle because I wanted to be a group for people to come together and meet people <laughs> and hang out and mingle. That was, that was the purpose in the group. Wow. Wow. And it's just transitioned and morph into something else. And so yeah. if I'm an entrepreneur and... and a small business owner, the first thing that I hear you say is that, you know, you really need to hone in on the problem that your business solves. Yes, that is literally step number one. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's really step number one is is honing in on that problem, uh, being able to figure out the solution mm-hmm. while also figuring out who your target market is, right? And knowing who, and many times, you know, we hear folks say it's everybody, right? And no, you know, and sometimes it may become everybody. And that's what I, I try to tell my students. It may become everybody, but if you can get one core group to get things going. So again, when I first started, it was all transplants. It was just people who didn't know anybody who wanted to know what was going on. Now it's grown to everybody black, you know, but, you know, but when I started out, it was very much focused on helping to connect folks that didn't know anybody or, and didn't know what was going on. So that's, that's key to, to business. Mm-hmm. You know, it is that right there is probably one of the highest challenges with clients mm. with me. <laughs> and that is getting them to really niche down to a specific audience. Yes. Lord. Everybody <laughs> feels like that they're going to be leaving out people or missing out on money and, and not mm-hmm. really realizing that the quickest way, I believe the quickest way to a profitable business is to know exactly who you're talking to and exclude everybody else. Absolutely. So talk a little bit about the importance of why you ultimately decided that I'm talking to black business owners, black entrepreneurs, black individuals in the community, because sometimes people will discourage you from doing that. And I'm sure you probably had individuals. So, you know, I started the group and then I started my business, Black Business Boom, um, almost two years later and never really thought about the fact that they fit together. Um, It was just something I wanted to do. But you're right. I was told by advisors when I started Black Business Boom, maybe you should call it just Business Boom. Or maybe you should open it up at least to other minorities, not just black. And I refuse to compromise on what I know the mission is of my business. Um, And again, a lot of times what you'll find is when you do niche down and when you are very intentional and very clear about who you serve, those people respect you more. And they, they love what you're doing even more because they feel like 
is just for them. So if I did at some point decide to go with all minorities, I don't feel like I would have as much um, support as I get from the Black community. So I think that that's one reason why it's important for you to be very clear and this is who I serve, you know, and go as deep as you can with serving those people and not, I mean, and it just makes your life easier. <laughs> you know, when you know exactly who it is that you're serving and you're not trying, you know, as business owners, we're having to worry about website copy and messaging and social media content, and, you know, and when you know who that audience is, then you can speak directly to that person versus trying to make something for everybody. And that's, man, we just keep moving step by step. You know, when you know who you're talking mm -hmm. to, then you know how to craft the, the messaging. Mm -hmm. you, you know what they're, they're thinking. You know what their pain points are. You know what their struggles are. You know what they're reading. You know, you know, the social network groups, you know, you know, and quite honestly, it was the hardest thing for me. You know, I probably it was be hard. four mm -hmm almost probably four years in before I just decided that, well, Markeith, you're really talking t to yourself and other people who were like you, meaning that coming out of healthcare corporate, mm -hmm. I ultimately ended up talking to people who sat in their office like me, mm -hmm. looking out the window saying, there's more to life than just a paycheck. There's more to life than climbing the corporate ladder. That mm -hmm. I have a true purpose and I want to be able to pursue that purpose and create something of my own instead of continuing to build somebody else's thing. But it took me probably four years to de decide that I'm just going to talk to corporate executives who want to get into consulting, coaching, and speaking. Mm. Because I was yeah, trying to serve everybody you think you're going to miss out on money. You know, a lot of times we're like, but wait, what if this person wants to, to do business with me? Now, what you'll find, I mean, some of those people will still find you, That's you right. know, and you can make a decision on if you want to work with them. <laughs> you know? So, but I think once, like you said, the money, you can really turn a profit once you learn who your audience is and you learn to cater to them and your messaging uh, hits home with them. Right. And a high six figure business serving as many people as possible with your and, and running around stressed and overwhelmed is the same mm -hmm. high six figure business, if not seven figure business, serving the people that you want to serve. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I think it I decided that I was going to do what I want to do, mm -hmm. you know, and stop trying to be what everybody else wanted me to be and be what was true to me and serve the community that I felt like I wanted to serve. And that, and that's it, you know? And again, I think that I've had so much engagement in my Facebook group because I make it very clear who my audience is. I make it very, very clear. I support black people and black businesses. I don't hate anyone else. Right. I love everyone, but this, the community that's priority for me and that I serve in my business and in my group, they are black people. Good, good. Yeah. Well, we are already about 24 minutes in. Can't believe it. But we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back and talk to Danielle about how do we get engagement? What are some things that we can do to gain more exposure, to get in front of the people uh, that we want to get in front of? And then how do we get them engaged? Because what good is the community? That's unengaged. So we'll be right back right after this message. Are you a corporate executive or career professional who's ready to take your life back, ready to take your time back, and you've thought about becoming a coach, a speaker, a trainer, or consultant in your own business? Well, I want to invite you to schedule a brand maximization discovery session so that I can help you to uncover that expertise and learn how to properly package yourself in an online based business. I'm Markeith Brayton, personal brand strategist and master lifestyle coach, who's all about helping corporate executives and career professionals to maximize and monetize their personal brand online so that they can create a location-free business 
and live the life that they crave. What I know for sure is that you want to be doing something that's fulfilling and that's exciting and that provides great value to the world. You want to make a greater impact on the lives of individuals. And you know that if you keep doing what you've always done, you'll always get the results that you've always gotten. So schedule a brand maximization discovery session by going to my website, markeithbrayton.com forward slash consultation. That's markeithbrayton.com forward slash consultation. And let's maximize and monetize your personal brand. All right, welcome back to the second half of the Maximize Your Brand podcast. My guest today is Miss Danielle McGee, who is the founder of Black Business Boom and a couple of other businesses. And we've been talking about how to build a community around your business, your movement, and your causes. And she shared some great tips in the first half. And this half, we're going to be talking about, you know, how do you really start to get that exposure in front of the right people, as we talked about? And then how do you really begin to engage those people to encourage them, to motivate them, to inspire them to uh, to become clients, to become customers, to become mm-hmm. supporters of whatever it is that you're doing? But before we get into that, you know, one of the things that I have been challenged with is, you know, really, really building a community around my business because of this thing. And I hear this all the time. So I consider myself to be an ambervert. Mm. An ambervert is an individual who can turn on introverted characteristics when they need them and turn them Mm. off when they don't need them. My preference. Ooh, I think I'm that. I think I'm that too, Marky. <laughs> My preference is I enjoy time alone, reading a book. You know, I don't mind having dinner by myself. But when I want to be with friends, when I need to go to a social networking thing, I know how to work that too. But my energy, my energy is gained when I am by myself so that I can go back out and do what I need to do to come back to get my energy. And so talk to those people who may be introverts and say, how do I build a group as an introvert? Or how do I build a group as an ambivert where I just turn it on and off when I need it? But my preference most often than not is, you know, Mm -hmm. more intimate settings of groups versus big Mm -hmm. groups. So the interesting thing is a lot of times you'll hear folks say, when you talk about Facebook groups, you gotta be going live. You gotta be going live all the time. I don't go live all the time. I don't have the energy to go live all the time. You know, I was like, okay, today, maybe I'll go live when we get done because I'm already up and I already have this energy to talk, you know, but uh, I think that it's important for folks to know that you're the admin and the purpose of the group. So maybe you go live, you know, to do that. But most of my time in my group is spent in posting text, you know, so Um, I think if you are a coach or a consultant, something like that, um, there is more of a need for you to be live and to, you know, to have those conversations. But you may have to find some other ways, because, again, I'm all about doing what's comfortable, because Mm -hmm. what's comfortable is not going to look forced. And people people know when you're forced and you don't want to be doing and you're not comfortable. So maybe you do a photo shoot, a branded photo shoot. And you post a photo with a quote, you know, or or a photo with a tip or a question um, to get engagement versus going live. So I think that there are definitely ways. Again, I do not enjoy going live. (laughs) I do not enjoy any of it. And I also had to find ways to make it work for me, like doing interviews. So I found that I I do enjoy talking to other people one-on-one, you know, that I feel like there's less pressure there. So I can, I do those, I do interviews in my group, you know, and that does multiple things. It gets that exposure that you need by being live, but it also helps to get exposure for black owned businesses within the group. So I think that, you know, we have to do what works for us Mm -hmm. and we have to find ways to make it work versus just conforming to what everybody says you need to be doing Mm -hmm. on social media. 
Yeah, you know, and I had to find that alignment was important. So my most innate gifts are speaking and teaching, you know, and so it, it was quite natural for me to start a podcast. It was quite natural for me to, you know, find opportunities for me to speak in order to get in front of people uh, because those were my most innate gifts. But in order for me to operate in that innate gift, I needed the time alone for preparation, for thinking, for reading, for whatever it is. And when I began to really study, I realized people like Oprah considers herself an introvert, you know, Bishop T.D. Jakes considers himself, you know, yeah. an introvert. And these are people who are public figures, right? But yet yeah. they enjoy their time of isolation for creation, mm-hmm. for being able to uh, serve in the best way, right, in order for them to make the greatest impact. And so you definitely have to understand who you are, what are your most innate gifts, you know, what's going to work for you. You know, speaking for me is is just easy. And so when I think about wanting to write a book, if I'm thinking that I have to sit down and write it word for word, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> but if I can sit down at a microphone and just talk it out and then send it to somebody to transcribe and then make it look, you know, make it work and fit sentences the in there, I mm-hmm. can do that. Same. I feel the same way <laughs> again. But, you know, you hear a lot of this stuff and it's like to have a big to have a successful group. You got to be doing this. and You got to be doing that. And I mean, I'm going to tell you, I really don't. There's no one size fits all approach. And knowing your community is so important. You know, I have learned my community based on looking at what gets engagement, looking at my insights, looking at, you know, how many likes and comments it gets. I have posted things and then been like, oh, I need to reword that. I didn't say that in a way that's going to get engagement and deleted it and reworded it because I know what my community responds to. I know what times they're active. You know, I know I just I know everything about, them, you know, so because many of them are just like me. But um, again, I really studied my community. I study my insights. I study, you know, my posts. What words did I use? How did I say it? I have a certain tone that people respond to when I'm kind of sassy. People respond to that when I'm like, OK, go to this website and do such and such. I, it doesn't get engagement. If I say, I put this out here and clearly y'all don't want no money. You know, when I say something in a way like that, then all of a sudden the engagement sparks. And so I had to really learn my audience to know what's going to get some quick comments. Because of course, those comments are going to boost the the engagement. It's going to show that post to more people and then it'll continue to get more comments. So you have to think about what's going to spark people to want to respond. Sometimes it's controversy. Um, You know, many times it's controversy on social media. You know, when I say controversy, you know, you don't want to create, you don't want to start fights, but you know, anytime you ask someone for their opinion, People can't wait to tell you what they think about something. So asking questions is extremely important. Asking folks for feedback, asking for opinions, using polls. You know, do you like this or this? Are you going for this person or that person? Would you rather do this or that? Those type of things, you know, people, again, they can't wait to tell you how they feel about something. And then someone's going to disagree and they're going to come and tell you how they feel about it. And it just leads to additional engagement that will help help to show that post to more people. Awesome. So that's a good segue. And so we're just going to kind of do a, a little rapid fire situation. So we know that the first thing about having a successful community group is identifying what the problem is. Uh, second thing is, is that we really need to know, well, who are we talking to based on the problem? Who has that problem? Who's trying to solve it? Who's trying to alleviate it? Who are we the Tylenol for? Mm-hmm. Now, speaking of engagement, once we know those two things, what would be the next step, you think? You really st- want to start to think about your content and what's going to resonate with the audience. So, um, 
what does the audience need from you? You know, and so again, my audience, it started with um, needing to know what was going on. Um, still, there's a lot of folks that need to know about programs and things like that. So I have a lot of people who come to me and ask me to post about different things to get it out to the community because the community just doesn't have a hub um, to go and find this information. Right. So if you can figure out, you know, what did they come here for? I'm in a group, um, Black Girls, oh God, Black Girls Magic Peloton Edition, right? It's my, my Peloton group for Black women, right? And so we we needed a, most of us came there for some encouragement, right? To get us to get on the bike, you know? <laughs> and, so, and so most of the content is that the moderators do are around how do they bring together this community to get them on the bike, right? <laughs> so, you know, they do things like plan um, group rides. They go live and do things, you know, just talk about different things. So you have to figure out then, you know, what does the community need from you? And then how do you craft content around that? How do you find content, especially if this is, you know, for like a coaching consultant right. um, business, you have to be very consistent mm -hmm. as well. So consistency is really key. And how do you, especially if it's just you, because some people have kind of made it where they're the only ones that really post in the, in the community as the admin. If you're going to do that, you have to be extremely consistent. You really want to be posting multiple times a day and you want to be uh, posting content that is going to spark conversation. Mm -hmm. So I have two groups. I've started um, my second group, and it's specifically for business owners. But my first group keeps me so busy that I can't even remember to post in the second group. So I've really kind of let that group go because if I'm not posting and being consistent, nobody's posting and being consistent. So consistency is key, you know, and trying to find content, even if it's sharing articles that are relevant, um, being very consistent, I would say at least three times a day in posting, there are ways to do that. So um, depending on your industry, you can use Feedly um, to find articles. So at one point I was using Feedly to find articles related to black business owners. And I just used a scheduler. I would, you know, have, I use Zapier, zap them into a form, them into a sheet, and then I would upload that and schedule them. And so every day, twice a day, it will post an article um, about black business owners. And mm -hmm. so that that's just a quick, easy way for you to make sure that you have some consistent content in your group. And you can use Feedly to find articles about any industry, um, any topic or pull from any website. All right. Right. And so that content yeah. is important. And I'm so glad you said consistency, because I know for about two or three years with my podcast, I start off consistent and then I might take off a month. <laughs> then I come back and be consistent and take off a month. And so I, w I would be hovering around, you know, maybe 100, 200, 300 downloads because I was just inconsistent. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it even went down to almost 50. Um, last year, 2020, I was like, I'm going to be consistent. One mm -hmm. podcast a week. One podcast a week. If I can't find a guest, I'm going solo. Whatever I need to do, I'm going to do it. And now, because of that consistency, you know, we're hovering around 2000, 2500, 3000 downloads. That's but amazing. It's, it's from consistency. It's all it's it's key in anything, especially on social media. I mean, I I have uh, social media coaching clients that, you know, they when they started, they were posting uh, once a month. <laughs> and I'm like, you, you're not going to you're not going to see any traction. That's why you're not getting any sales, you know. And so you have to find ways to become uh, consistent. And right. so, again, I use Feedly as one of my ways, or I would sit down on a Sunday and schedule, you know, all of my posts, you know, the many of the scheduling tools, you can schedule posts to groups. Right. So you, I would schedule, 
those posts and people would be like, Danielle, how do you get any work done? You're on Facebook all day. And I'm like, I'm on Facebook all day. <laughs> but now, you know, the group, if I don't, if I don't go on there to approve posts for two hours, I come back and I have like 40 new posts yeah. to approve. So yeah. now the community it's posts are so consistent that I, yeah, yeah, that I don't have to be so intentional about it myself, you know, but I think also, um, depending on what your business is, branding is really important as well. Um, as I, I, uh, my business partner in my marketing firm, you know, she's a brander. That's what she does. And my branding was just not very consistent. It was just, it was all over the place. And so people didn't, they just, they didn't know it was black business boom or black people make moves when they saw it. Okay. And so, you know, I want, when I'm live or I got something to say, people need to know to, if they're scrolling through, it's Black Business Bull. Let me stop and see what Danielle is talking about. Right. So um, I think branding, you know, things like your cover photo, very important. You know, that, that profile picture, all of those little things um, can make a huge difference in the feel of your group. And, you know, that cover photo alone, when I see it, I should get a great idea of who the, what this group is. And if it's like, your group as a culture consultant, people need to know that in the cover photo. And you also want to have a call to action there. Oh, you know, you cool. really want to have, you know, how they can find you. What's your website? You know, something there. Um, and I think also as you're curating your group, being very intentional about who you let in the group, you know, it, it's really a quality over quantity thing. You know, I depending on the type of group. Now, my group, um, I'm all about getting a large group because I'm trying to get as much information to the community as possible. I can also monetize that. Right. <laughs> so if I go to someone and I say I have a group that's twenty five thousand people in it, they may pay me, you know, to post in that group. So um, I have a different strategy for monetization in that group than than most people will have. Um, but um, if it is your group, especially as a culture uh, a consultant, any professional that really wants to, uh, if you want to sell something in that group, you need to be very intentional about uh, the people that you let in the group, how you get them in the group, uh, and about capturing their information up front. I hate that, you know, I didn't know these things four years ago and I wasn't intentional uh, about it. But now anyone who I talk to starting a Facebook group, I tell them, you know, be very, very specific. Again, it goes back to knowing that target, right. And, and being able to reach that target. And if you have a whole bunch of people, so if I have my smaller group has 1500 people in it, and it's supposed to be for black business owners. But if I was letting in a bunch of folks that were not business owners, it wouldn't serve me when I go in there to try to sell a social media session, you know, or something. So um, you have to be very intentional. And like I said, capturing that data, getting their email address, at least their email address up front. Very important because now I'm working backwards and trying to capture email addresses and, and trying to incentivize folks to give them my email address. And so, um, to, that's something to think about as well as how can you incentivize folks to get on your email list? Because, you know, social media, they'll shut down a group. Yeah. They'll shut down a page. Mm -hmm. They go away. So you really have to use your group as a way to build your email list and be very intentional about that. But a lot of people don't want to know. They don't want to be on anybody else's list. Yeah. <laughs> and so you got to trick them a little bit. You know, you have to offer <laughs> them something. You got to give them something in exchange for that email list. You know, so it could be as simple as, you know, to get my newsletter that has tips and tricks about doing whatever yeah. it is I do. Um, but think about how you can incentivize folks to give you their email address and what do they really want. I knew that still in my group, a lot of folks didn't know what was going on. So even though we had grown to 10, 15,000, now it's even harder for me to, sh for everybody in the group to know, for me to put out a post and everybody to see this is the event that I'm hosting. Yeah. 
So I'm going to incentivize you by telling you, get on my list so you'll know when I host events or you'll know I'll send you a newsletter with all the events, Black events in Nashville, whatever it might be. So think about that incentive and how you can incentivize folks to give them your email um, address or, or phone number or whatever it might be. You're doing real good if you can get that phone number. Mm-hmm. If you can get them on a text list, that's when you really want it. You know, if you can can do that. I mean, and we see Markeith do a lot of these things. Um, you know, as a digital marketer, you you we learn these things and how important they are, but they're not things that a regular person or a regular entrepreneur cannot do. You right. know, and so and there are things that you can do to to build your business, build your brand, build your list. But, building your list is very important. And so having a group of 25,000, if my list is 500, I'm losing. You know? So you have to find a way to really, again, be thinking about monetizing mm-hmm. and th- be thinking about that upfront before you start the group. Because again, I wasn't. And then I had to backtrack and say, how how am I going to make some money off of running this group every day? You know? And so I, I always advise now know exactly what your money-making strategy is before you go and start a group so that everything you do can be to working toward that. That whole concept of beginning with the end in mind. I was talking to a friend of mine actually this morning and I was walking him through the process because he wanted to do automated webinars for mm-hmm. his government contracting consulting, and he may still be on. So I'm talking about you, uh, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I walked him from the beginning with the end in mind. I said, so what's the end result? The end result is that you want to get them on a, well, the end result was you want to get them in your government contracting online course. Okay, so mm-hmm. that's the end result. What comes before getting them in government mm-hmm. contracting online course? Well, I need to get them on the webinar. So now I need to have the webinar created mm-hmm. or I need to do the webinar every week. So now, so what happens for the webinar every week? Well, I need to schedule that it's going to be on this day at this time every mm-hmm. single week. You know, but then sometimes we want to jump to automated webinar and st- before we perfect the webinar. So I'm like, no, we need to do the webinar every single week until you know that it's converting the way that you want mm-hmm. it to convert. And then maybe you want to automate it. So what comes before the automated webinar? Well, I need to get them on to opt in for the mm-hmm. webinar. So what do I need to do? I need to create a landing page with the right mm-hmm. messaging in order to get them on uh, in the opt-in list. All right. So what comes before that? Well, I need to have an email sequence. So when they opt in, <laughs> you see yeah. what I'm saying? So it's a lot of, I love stuff. talking to people who speak my language. <laughs> <laughs> I love all right, it. So you yes. gotta have all those steps in place and it seems simple and really it is simple, but you've got to do all the steps. And the reason why I can clearly talk through all the steps is because for so long, I just kind of skipped steps and, you know, did this and that until I realized, you know what, the only way this is going to work is if you do all the steps. Absolutely. And again, so you have to really think through this entire funnel before, you know, a lot of folks just they're like, I'm going to launch a Facebook group. They say, I should have a Facebook group. What's the purpose in the Facebook group? How are you going to sell from the Facebook group? How are you going to convert? Because it doesn't just go, in most cases, it doesn't just go, people get in a Facebook group and then they just buy. It just, it doesn't work like that, except for folks that are like in the Amazon groups and, you know, some of these boutique groups like that. that. That's different. But, you know, for most of us, it doesn't just go, you know, Facebook group. Oh, let me open up my pocketbook. Like that doesn't, it doesn't work like that. Um, And I think it's also just really important to let people know who you are. I, again, have failed. I can, I give people advice based on my failures, you know, and I have failed at letting people know who I am. There's so many people in my group that don't know that I do digital marketing. They don't know you know, that I can help them with their businesses. They know I promote Black-owned businesses. They know I'm all about supporting Black-owned businesses. 
and a lot of them do not know how. And so now I'm again, what is my strategy for letting people know how I help black owned businesses? And I'm having to work backwards, you know, from like, okay, this is where I want to, I need to start to convert some clients from this group. So how do I do that? Um, and really the first step is letting them know who I am, what I do, um, being consistent and telling them who I am and what I do. And we also have to keep in mind that people are tired of being sold to many times. We're being sold to all day. And so you don't want to put yourself in a position where folks are just starting to scroll past your stuff because they are tired of being sold to. So if you can find ways to position yourself as the expert that you are without always being, you know, go buy this, buy this, download this, like people are just exhausted with that. So again, we got to get a little uh, sneaky sometimes in how we, we do things. So I'll be, I have a resident professional program in my group. Um, I'll be announcing myself uh, next week as the resident uh, <laughs> digital marketer, you know? And so I had to figure out, you know, how do I let everybody know that this is what I do? Right. Um, because I don't feel like going live every day and giving tips. You know, that's one way you can definitely do it. Uh, but I don't feel like doing that. So I'm, I'm going to make an announcement. I'm the resident digital marketing coach, you know, so you just got to get creative sometimes, <laughs> but mm -hmm. let folks know who you are. We got, we have to um, be, stop being afraid to let folks know who we are and how great we are. Well, I know one of the things that we'll end here. One of the things that I am planning to do in 2021 is to work smarter and in working smarter. One of the things that, I am implementing that I know works because it's worked for me mm -hmm. is running ads <laughs> that I really could eliminate a whole lot of, I mean, all the content that I have, I've been podcasting for five years now, all the content mm -hmm. that I have, all the lives that I've done, all the emails that I've sent out, all these things can be repurposed into ads to have a call to action to getting people you know, to do what I've learned in my uh, new coaching um, situation, uh, application process. And from that application process, mm -hmm. they go to the webinar. And from the webinar, they say, yes, we buy. They say, no, they don't. And you know what? I love ads. You know, <laughs> I, I tell all my clients to use ads. I love when they're open to it. But not only that, you can use ads to push a Facebook group. So you cannot um, run ads from a Facebook group, but you can create a page with the same name. You can push an ad out. You know, if I wanted to really grow my group, I could certainly push an ad out, you know, with a page with, under the Black Business Boom page or create a page with the same name as my group and say, you know, um, we're learning about all the happening events in Nashville for for black folks, you know, click here to get in and direct folks to, to Facebook groups. So, you know, that's one way for you to make sure you're getting the right people as well by targeting with Facebook ads to reach those people and then directing them to your Facebook group. And organic is great, you know, mm -hmm. but I started to look at and study, well, you know, all the major companies, they fight to be the commercial on Super Bowl. There's got to mm -hmm. be a reason why they would be willing to pay a million dollars for 30 seconds. Not only that, Facebook is <laughs> not, uh, they're intentional. They want you to pay for ads, you know, so your organic reach is not going to be great on Facebook because they really want you to pay for ads on That's Facebook it. and Instagram. So, you know, I tell people, if you can cut out a couple cocktails a week, you can afford Facebook ads, right? I mean, we're all stuck in house for the most part anyway. Um, you know, for me, I when I was able to go out every month, even if I went out one time, I was spending $50 just to yeah. go out and have two drinks. That $50 I can put on Facebook ads to grow my business. You can set a monthly budget, you know, of $30, $20, and they'll stretch it out over those 30 days for you. So, 
you know, don't be afraid of ads. They can certainly help to build your business and build your community as well in a targeted way. In a targeted way. Mm-hmm. Well, this has been a great, great conversation. We This might have been the longest so far this year, but uh. it's been valuable content. <laughs> and so I'm so grateful for you joining me for mm-hmm. this conversation just to, you know, talk about your experience in building a community that's engaged and, and what you can do once you build that community. And so that's what we were talking about, monetization and, mm-hmm. and really being able to serve your mm-hmm. uh, potential customers and clients. So before we go, let the people know how can they continue to follow you and learn more about you? Absolutely. So you can follow on Instagram, Black Business Boom at Black Business Boom on Instagram, uh, Black Business Boom on Facebook and Danielle McGee on LinkedIn. I think it's Danielle McGee MBA on LinkedIn. Um, And if anyone's interested in social media, learning uh, more about social media with me or uh, becoming a social media coaching client, you can go to DanielleMcGee.com and sign up for a discovery session for free there. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, Danielle, thank you for joining me for this episode of the Maximize Your Brand podcast, the Black History Month series for those of you who are listening on the audio version of the podcast i want to thank you for for listening and i hope that you take the information and actually apply what danielle discussed tonight but once again this episode was being sponsored by and let me put that on the screen real quick by my seven stages to shift your brand checklist all you have to do is go text brand me all one word brand me all one word to 77222 and we'll send you a link to be able to download this free gift well until next week we have a guest who's going to be talking about black finances mr charles winfrey is going to be joining us for the maximize your brand podcast so until next week just remember this always shoot for the top because it's the bottom that's overcrowded Take care.